Hi there! Welcome to my second video, which hopefully will be better than the first one. I'm still nervous, as you can see. Uh, now you're probably wondering how many t-shirts with the company's logo does this guy have? Well, the truth is I have around maybe 15 or 20. Um, and I like them a lot. I have all kinds of colors. I have blue, I have light blue, I have dark blue, I have yellow, I have red, I have white, I have black, and so on. But enough about my t-shirts, so now let's cut to the chase and talk about what I like the most, which is tourism. And in today's video, I want to talk about uh, how I started and how I was uh, inspired to follow the path that I am on today and um, what led me on, uh, on this path. And I will start by saying that <clears throat> I did not grow up in a, in a family of hikers. So mom and dad were always the kind of people who liked to travel a lot and they still do it, luckily. Um, but my sister and I have traveled a lot with them over the years. Uh, you could say that I, I grew up on the backseat of a car. And I guess like, like in most cases, um, where there are two kids in the family, my sister and I, during these uh, long trips in the country, we used to be on the on the back seat and fight a lot and argue and kick each other in the face and spit on each other and so on. You know, the kind of stuff that um, brothers do. Very normal. Um, and then, so I, we we didn't I didn't do much hiking when I was uh, when I was a kid. And then when I was uh, in high school, I think. I did main, uh, maybe two or three trips by train to Prahova Valley um, by train with some friends and that was pretty much it. And then when I was at university again I, I did maybe two or three hiking trips in four years. Um, you know I had, I had the usual problem that most students have I suppose. I, I didn't have much money, uh, I did not know where to go and so on and my friends were not interested in hiking too much. So I don't have a hiker's background, if you will. Uh, but then moving forward, in uh, 2007, I was working for this small company and at some point in uh, one day we received the... Uh... Okay, take number two. Uh, so as I was saying, in 2007 I was working for a small company as a computer programmer and and what I'm about to tell you now is is a very real story, okay? It's like, you could call it my epiphany. It's, it's the spark that made me want to do what I do today. Uh, so one day I was, I was in my office working and we received um, a visit from some investors from uh, Switzerland. So this is a way back. So this is in 2007. So my my uh, memory is, is a bit blurry in some cases. So if I don't remember very well what I want to say, and if I stop in the middle of the sentence, uh, it's because I'm trying to remember uh, all the things that happened 13 years ago. So one day we received this, uh, this, uh, these investors from Switzerland and one of them comes to my office. So he was back then in his 60s, I would say late 60s. Uh, Mr. Schneider comes to my office and we, we start to talk and he notices on the wall, I, I had a picture of me um, climbing in Chukash Mountains. Um, it was a picture from winter, from 2006, from March, I remember very well. And he asked me, oh, is that you? And I said, yeah. And he said, do you, like, uh, do you like hiking and climbing? And I said, yeah, sure. And I said, just, just, you know, just as a joke maybe, I said, maybe one day I will go to Switzerland and climb your mountains. Um, I think it sounded really silly. But anyway, he played along and he said, okay, I would like to see that. And then he said, okay, this is my business card. Um, I have a very good friend, one of my best friends actually, he's a mountain guide. He's one of the best in uh, Switzerland and he could show you around and he could teach you the basic stuff and if you if you like what you see then maybe you could do this as your full-time career 
in the future. And, you know, I thought, nah, I, I didn't say it out loud, but I thought, nah. Uh, so I, I took the business card and just put it somewhere and then he left. And I think after a couple of weeks, my father asked me, did you email uh, Schneider? My, my father knew the whole story. And I said, uh, no, was I, was I supposed to? Was it important? And he said, you know, maybe you should, you should try, just give it a go. And I said, yeah, okay, okay, whatever. So I emailed Schneider and to my surprise, he replied and he said, I made all the arrangements. So this was in, uh, in July. And he said, I made all the arrangements for you to come here. And um, I talked to my friend, to uh, Mr. Yossi, and you will come here and stay with him and hike with him for a week. And you'll see if you like it, okay? If not, you know, no strings attached. Ooh, I thought, wow, uh, I read it again and it said the same thing. So I thought, this is real. This is real. Okay. Uh, I went home and I talked to my girlfriend, who is now my wife, and I said, listen, I have this opportunity to go to Switzerland and to learn about mountaineering and hiking, and maybe I could pursue this as a career in the future. And my, uh, my girlfriend said, yeah, sure, go ahead. And then I asked, would you like to go as well? And she said, if, if it's possible, sure, why not? So I emailed Mr. Schneider and I said, listen, is it possible for my girlfriend to, to come along as well? Because I want, her to see, uh, I want her to see Switzerland too. And he said, yes, sure. And I will pay for her expenses as well. So uh, I remember we bought some, some tickets for, uh, for the bus, some bus tickets, because we could not afford to go to Switzerland by, by plane. And we just hopped on the bus in, uh, it was October, we hopped on the bus and went to Bern in Switzerland. And we met Mr. Schneider. Mr. Schneider showed us uh, to the hotel and we had something to eat. And then he said, okay, now it's time to meet the guide. So we'll go and uh, meet Mr. Yossi with whom you will spend the rest of the week. So I said, okay, sure. Um, now the, the, the next thing is, is a shock, pure shock. So we went to his house and some gentleman who looked like Santa Claus opened the door. So when I saw him with his you know, white beard and white hair, I thought, this is not the guide, right? Then, so back then I was 25. I thought I was really fit. And I, I was thinking, you know, probably the guide is inside and this is just the father, right? And it's like he read my mind and he said, Hi, I'm Mr. Yossi, I'm, I will be your guide for the next week. And I thought, hell no, this is not real. I mean, what if, you know, something happens on the tour because he looks like he's in his 70s, like mid 70s. Uh, back then, you know, I, I didn't think people in their 70s would do much hiking, honestly. Not in Romania, not in Switzerland. I mean, I, I wasn't used to that for me was the first. Um, but my guide was 65, 66 back then and he invited us inside and he said, okay, uh, let's talk about um, the plan for, for this week. So basically every day our guide would wake us up at four or five in the morning. It was like, like in the army, honestly, I'm not kidding. Um, and he would prepare breakfast for us and then we would drive someplace and then we would hike for, I don't know, God knows how many hours. And then in the evening, after I think 10, 12 hours, we'd be exhausted, my uh, girlfriend and I, but he would be fine. I mean, he wouldn't have, you know, a care in the world. He was, he was super active, super fit. And so after a week of doing hiking, uh, rock climbing and whatever, uh, on the last on the last day on the last evening uh, we went to mr schneider's house and we had uh, a farewell dinner and i asked politely uh, mr schneider um, is there any any way i could repay you for everything you did for me and he said he told me this and, th and this is really interesting he said you know i over the years i invested in a lot of businesses and what i wanted was to give people like you 
a chance to do something. If I notice that they like it, I want to offer them that chance and see if they want to go further. And you were one of those people, a few people who took this chance and really wanted to do something. And I'm sure you will, you will do it in the future. You will pursue this, uh, this as a career. You will go on this path. So he said, as far as I'm concerned, no strings attached, you don't uh, owe me anything. If what you saw here was helpful for you, then go for it, follow your dream. So I thought that was really amazing because just imagine someone you don't know um, hands you this ticket basically and says, go for it, do it. If you really believe in it, do it. So um, that was the moment when I thought, you know, maybe I could do this for a living. Maybe I could do this in Romania and maybe I could get out of the office because I wasn't a fan of working in the office. Really, I, I didn't like it. And um, I thought maybe I could do this full time. So I went back to Romania, but it took me another six years uh, to actually decide to quit my job and to do something uh, with the mountain guiding. And I remember in 2013, so after six years of thinking about you know, the best time to do it and so on, I went to my boss and I said, this is it, my friend. I quit and it happens today, now, as we speak. If you haven't figured out what I was uh, aiming for, what I really wanted actually, um, I was aiming for freedom, that was my goal. Um, I wanted to be able to leave whenever I wanted in the mountains, so if, if I wanted to leave on a, say on, on a Tuesday, I wanted to be able to do it. I did not want to be regimented anymore. And so that was my goal in the very beginning. I just wanted to, to get out of the office and leave whenever I wanted, where I wanted. That was, uh, that was my goal, to speak. And I remember my boss asked me, so ha did you find something else? And I said, well, no, but I'm going to work for myself. And he asked me, so what if it doesn't work? And then I asked back, but what if it works? I mean, if it doesn't work, that's okay. I can always go and look for another job and things will be fine. But if it works, then I will be the one man show. I will have to do this and this and this and this and this. And I will be very busy. So that will be tough. So I, I went to, uh, to all the people that I knew in the, in the factory and I said, goodbye. Uh, this is my last day. I'm going to do this. Everybody said, go for it and I remember I, I went to the car and I was so happy and I had, um, I had a CD with heavy metal music in my car and I played it loudly I blew the speakers and I lit up a cigar that I had uh, in my car for this moment and then I went home and I said to my wife my girlfriend that's it I'm free from now on we'll see what happens but um, in the next couple of weeks Things did not go exactly how I expected them to go, so it was tough. But I will tell you more about that in my next video, so cheers, thank you for watching.